It's made by Malink. <laughs> Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green. My honored guest today is Hui Nguyen of Hawaii Energy Systems. And boy, we're going to talk about exciting stuff. Exhaust hoods. Wow. You thought I had some sexy topics before. This is going to blow your socks off. But be, well, welcome to the program. We, and thank you so much for, for joining us here. Well, thank you very much, Howard. Thanks for, mm -hmm. thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah. we're going to talk about stuff that most people don't know about, but they darn well should know about. Right. So if we could have our first slide, be, this would be a general slide, and this is Hawaiian Electric's pre, uh, projection for 100% clean energy by 2045, this is when it still was with Nexera, and they still were looking at liquefied natural gas. The blue part of the spectrum is liquefied natural gas. Oh, on the left is current date, on the right is 2045. And then that uh, seafoam green thing on the right is a unnamed type of new fuel. Well, this was what happened was Nexera left and then synthetic natural gas left. So this projection by Hawaiian Electric is no longer the future. And people like we and myself look at losing efficiency to start where we are on the left and just go on a straight line down, 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 down till we get to zero. And we'll talk about all the wonderful ways we, not all, but many of the wonderful ways we, we can achieve that. So we talk, talk a little bit about what Hawaii Energy Systems sure. uh, does. Yeah, so Hawaii Energy Systems, we're based in uh, Halaba Valley. We're um, a energy management and control uh, controls company, and we focus um, on demand control for energy savings. And so mm -hmm. we go into a lot of buildings and install DDC and energy management systems and uh, specific control systems um, in the, the end goal is to save energy. Mm -hmm. And uh, if for those who aren't uh, familiar with demand control, think of a father in a house with three teenagers and he's going around, who left these lights on? Who's taking a 30 minute shower? Don't you kids, you think money grows on trees? And by turning all the lights off and demanding that the daughter get out of the shower right. and not use six jillion gallons of water, he's doing demand control on a rather. <laughs> right. And you know, that, that's exactly it. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what our company does, with, but it's all automated, right? It's done by, mm -hmm. um, by computers and um, by logic. And so, um, but yeah, you're exactly right. It's um, delivering the exact amount of air conditioning, for example, mm -hmm. for the minimum amount of energy. And so, mm -hmm. um, and so that applies to any type of system. It could be refrigeration, air conditioning, hot water, um, lighting, um, exactly what you just said. Yeah. And, and just to give another very simple corollary, say you have an AC system and you want to walk into a cool house. So in the bad old days, you kept the AC running all day long. Now you have remote control for the AC so that when you and the family are headed home, you activate it, say, 15 minutes in advance, and you walk into a cool house, but you didn't have it running all day long. Right. Another very simple analogy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, get into our slides here. Castle Medical Center, I think this is one of your very, very proud achievements here. Yeah, so this is Castle Medical. Um, we have our control system there. Um, and it's doing um, energy management. It's tracking all the um, important pieces of equipment for the HVAC system there. And so what you see on the slide is a control panel for, um, for the, uh, the chiller plant. And you see there's a couple cooling towers, probably if, it might be a little bit too small, but on the top there of the graphic, there's a cooling tower. In the middle is a chiller. There's a couple pumps on the left and right. And so each of those pieces of equipment kind of work individually. Um, their control system. So what we do is we install our algorithm that takes control of this plant and gets the most uh, efficiency out of this plant as possible, um, take, using as a system, not individual mm -hmm. uh, piece of equipment. And so the goal is to deliver 
well, that screen says 411 tons. Um, the goal is to deliver that amount of energy um, or uh, cooling with the minimum amount of energy. So um, the, the goal is to minimize the KDO per ton. So you see on the graphics 0.75, which is pretty good. And since we've been in some very, very muggy weather and we all have memory of that horrible weather we had last year, and it's all co combination that was El Nino plus global warming. Now at least we're in the La Nina phase. But what's interesting is the more moisture you have in the air, the harder the AC has to work. And I'm sure that you have sensors that sense the incoming humidity and say, OK, we've got to ramp up. But then as soon as we go back to our trade winds, humidity goes down. Then you have controls that say, OK, we, we can relax a bit now. Exactly. Um, yeah. So air conditioning is not just sensible heat, but also latent heat. Um, sensible is, the, is dry bulb temperature. Uh, mm -hmm. latent, is, latent heat is the uh, humidity that's in the air. Mm -hmm. And so um, we're, for air conditioning, we're trying to take care of the humidity and, and, and temperature. Mm -hmm. um, on really humid days, um, not only is there more air conditioning needed for the building, but then the equipment doesn't run as, efficient, as uh, efficiently. Um, so your cooling tower doesn't get as cold of water as it, mm -hmm. as it like mm -hmm. to. So. Uh, you're kind of belling both things. And so, yeah, we measure for, um, for dry, uh, dry bulb and humidity. And then based on that, we can control um, our system to um, run as most efficiently in, in those conditions mm -hmm. as possible. And even though a hospital is a 24-7 operation, I'm sure that there's a heck of a lot more activity going on during a work day than there is at 3 o'clock in the morning so that you adjust the flow. Uh, according to the activities and the, the heat generated internally and all the ac activity, all the machines on and so forth. Correct, yeah. So if you look at a typical building or a hospital, you'll see kind of a load curve and the peak is usually about 3 or 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, and then if it's 24-hour building, the, the, the minimum amount of energy used or cooling needed is usually you know, 3 a.m., 4 a.m. or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, um, this system automatically adjusts to um, the load of the building, and so it senses for, um, we have uh, temperature sensors and pressure sensors throughout the building that uh, we take in that input and the algorithm determines what's the best possible operating conditions mm -hmm. for maximum energy savings. Yeah. yeah, and can you actually shut down chillers at two in the morning, or they just go into a sweet spot? Uh, yeah, so um, the algorithm determines if it's shutting down compressors or mm -hmm. shutting down chillers entirely. Mm -hmm. um, so this, if uh, that graphic shows it has a couple chillers that are online. Um, two chillers are online, and then there's four compressors online with two that are offline. Um, and so based on the billing load, the outside conditions uh, can cycle off compressors or cycle off even chillers, mm -hmm. um, uh, depending on the load. And that's measured in real time. It's not. It's it's very um, yeah very it, fast. In, instant. Instantly, yeah, correct. Yeah. And how much has Castle uh, saved as a result of um, this? Um, quite a bit of energy. So um, mm -hmm. they have uh, new chillers, um, and so you see that KW per ton, um, 0.75. Mm -hmm. um, before we got there, it was up in the 1.5, 1.4 uh, range, and so. Ooh, that's almost um, double. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. Uh, they save quite a bit of energy. It's mm -hmm. just a. Uh, in the 50s and 60 thousand dollars a year, so mm -hmm. just that's just a control system. Um, of course, they have you know they've done a lot of other work um, yeah. that yeah. I'm not accounting for. And th that's something about efficiency. You do have to put out your initial capital investment, but it gets repaid. Right. Yeah. yeah most projects, mm -hmm. um, DDC projects and uh, control projects, pay back within uh, two or three years, mm -hmm. and so your investment gets paid back fairly quickly. And then yeah. after that, it's it's all um, revenue at that. Yeah. To say a three-year payback, that's kind of equivalent to a bank hanging a banner out of its uh, front porch saying 33% interest paid. Correct. People would go invest People in would that. invest it right away. <laughs> yeah. It was a 33% yeah. return. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what, what else you're doing. Yeah. I think there's something called a, an IntelliHood. What in the world is an IntelliHood? Yeah, so what you see here is this is a demand control kitchen ventilation system. Um, and so it's the same idea. So what we're doing is we're, that's a kitchen um, with a exhaust hood. Um, and and explain what an exhaust hood. So exhaust hood is yeah. capturing all the smoke and heat that's generated during cooking. Mm -hmm. And it's exhausting out of the building. Um, mm -hmm. 
and there's typically maybe a five or ten horsepower motor on the roof that runs um, full speed, um, a lot of times 24/7 or you know at least 18, 16 hours a day, um, mm -hmm. moving air out of the building. Um, a lot of times that's air conditioned air as well. Mm -hmm. And so what this system does is um, we install a temperature sensor, which kind of see the middle, um, top middle, and then also a optic sensor, uh, kind of a laser that goes across. And what those things are doing are it's sensing for temperature changes in the duct. Um, so increased cooking activity um, increases the temperature. And then the optic sensor is um, looking for smoke. Um, and so with those two inputs, this uh, system ramps up and down the, uh, the exhaust. Uh, for any, um, so when, uh, when there is no active cooking, there is no smoke, um, the VFDs go down to lower speed for energy savings. Mm -hmm. And t talk about varied use. I mean, sometimes, say, uh, 7 o'clock on a Saturday night, this device would be used just continuously to, to the max. And then 3 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe, maybe nothing going on. Correct, exactly, yeah. So mm -hmm. um, these kitchen hoods, if it's on 16 hours a day, um, there might be four hours of really active cooking. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the times in between, between the lunch hour and the dinner, uh, dinner hour, there might be very light usage, and, but the exhaust runs full speed during that time. Uh, what this system does is senses that uh, automatically and changes the speed of the fan and then saving energy. Yeah, yeah. And consider, the, the, we live in a tourist state, and depending on who's... Estimating it, we have up to 70,000 hotel rooms in this state, and all of, and very high occupancy, all those visitors, I think there's something like 200,000 tourists in this state at any given time. Right. They've all got to eat, and most of them are going to be eating in restaurants. Right. So that equals one heck of a lot of restaurants. I have no idea how yeah. many there are. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. And so you get this type of savings out of hundreds of restaurants, and you are talking substantial numbers here. Correct, yeah. yeah. Hundreds of restaurants, we're maybe talking thousands, thousands of horsepower of mm -hmm. motors running full speed. Um, and so the, it's very significant. Um, Hawaii Energy, the, um, um, the rebate folks, um, mm -hmm. recognize this as well, and they provide um, $700 per horsepower on this type of project. Mm. So um, they recognize the need for this. and. Um, and so it's, it's a pretty good solution for, for some of the problems that we have. Se $700 a horsepower. $700 horsepower. So if it's a big unit, 10 horsepower, we're talking $7,000. Correct, yeah. yeah. That's a good incentive for a restaurant to right. retrofit. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. It's uh, typical payback. We see two to three years on these type of projects. Mm -hmm. um, Again, two to three years. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, um, they, they do very well. They, um, I said a lot of the times they're, they're exhausting air conditioned air, and so mm -hmm. you're really paying for energy twice. Precisely. Yeah. But when you are exhausting during very heavy times, I, I would point out the air quality also, because it's not just heat coming out, it's all kinds of particulate matter, which is not particularly healthy for the kitchen occupants. So you want to get that stuff out of there. Correct. And that's yeah. why that optic sensor is there, is to um, sense for smoke. And if there's smoke, mm -hmm. particulate matter, it goes up to 100%. Uh, yeah, make sure it gets, yeah. removes that uh, particles. And on that very cheery note, we need to take a break. Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Hui Nguyen, my guest today. Back in a moment. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join me every Friday at 2 p.m. to discover what's likable about science. Aloha, I'm Chantal Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm going on tour. I'm taking you around the world. We're going to Canada, and then we're going to, well, we're in America, then we're going to San Francisco. So keep staying tuned, 11 a.m. every Wednesday on the Savvy Chick Show. We'll see you next time. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. I know you're bored this summer. You're just sitting at home, figuring out what to do, go to the beach. Spend some time with Think Tech Hawaii. Spend the time thinking about how you can contribute to Hawaii and make it a better place to live. And start watching some of the programs on Think Tech, including Stan Energy Man, where you'll learn all about everything energy, especially hydrogen and transportation. So we'll see you every Friday at 12 o'clock noon. Stan Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.
<laughs> Howard Wig, again, code green. Title of the program, What's Cool in the Hood? With Hui Nguyen of Hawaii Energy Systems. What is this? It's not neighborhood anything, no. It is exhaust hoods over commercial kitchens. And we left off by saying there are hundreds and hundreds of such kitchens in, in little old Hawaii because we're so tourist oriented. And you multiply this and we're gonna get some very serious savings, two to three year payback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let's uh, resume our slide looking at, well, what a, what a, intriguing slide this is sure so this this is the whole area serving the kitchen now what kind of savings can we garner from this what in the world is going on here we yeah so you see this graph here um, is showing from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. which is pretty typical for uh, operation for a exhaust hood um, and so what you see in the kind of the grayish color that's a constant volume system so that's a uh, exhaust fan running 100% of the time from 6 a.m. to 2, uh, 2 a.m. Um, what you see in green is the, the difference in fan speed for the IntelliHood system. Um, so uh, we ramp ours down, down to 30% when there's no uh, smoke or change in heat detected. Um, you can see during the lunch hour and kitchen hour, there are some spikes um, for, and that's kind of what you want. You want to exhaust the smoke when it's there. Um, you see those large spikes that go to all the way 100%. Mm -hmm. That's that smoke being present. Um, the dark blue um, graph or the dark blue area you kind of see, that is a more of a typical installation where it's temperature only, um, where you might see some um, exhaust hoods, um, some of our competitors. Um, that's kind of what they do. And as you see, without detecting for smoke, they have to exhaust based on temperature changes. And so they go to 100% down to 50%. Basically, it's almost a um, on-off control almost, um, where our system can ramp down um, sensing for temperature and smoke at the same time. So it looks like your overall savings is easily in the 50% range, I, I would guess? Uh, well, it's actually more. This, what you're seeing more. here is, um, is actually fan speed. Um, because of the uh, fan infinity laws, it's actually an um, exponential savings, so it's to the third power. So if you're saving 70% on fan energy, you're actually saving I'm sorry, on fan speed, you're actually saving 97% uh, on fan energy. And so um, when you see 30% there, that's, you're only using 3% of the power that would use mm -hmm. at 100% fan. Um, and with 50%, you're using about 12% energy um, compared to 100%. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, the energy savings graph would actually look even uh, more drastic than this. Yeah. And one reason why traditionally the fans have been going on all the time is it's not just an energy issue, it's a health issue also. Correct. Uh, we um, want to keep that, that air uh, clean. Yeah, yeah. so um, that is correct. So you do, um, before, before when technology has, has, isn't as advanced as it is now, um, you err on the safe side. You mm -hmm. exhaust as much as you can. Um, yeah. Now with the technology, now that we can actually measure and mm -hmm. determine mm -hmm. if fan uh, energy is needed or not, uh, we could do it based on demand controls. Mm -hmm. and. Um, that's kind of what this product uh, does. So all over, we're talking 70% savings? Um, yeah. Generally, 70% savings overall is typical. Um, yeah. yeah, it might maybe even more. We've seen some 24-7 24 24 fans uh, that don't ever shut off, and we might see 80% savings on those type yeah. of applications. Yeah. That is just amazing. Well, what other kind of uh, tricks do you have for us here? Oh, my goodness. This yeah. is colorful. Yeah, so this is an energy dashboard. Um, so one of the other systems that we install is called a proton energy management system. Um, the first uh, dashboard that we saw was the Allerton energy uh, management system that we install. Uh, more for hospitals, larger buildings, enterprise level control systems. Um, more for restaurants and uh, smaller warehouses. What we um, recommend is uh, something like this, a proton energy management system, uh, which um, it's, it does, um, scheduling, energy monitoring, uh, has a dashboard just like this. It can do some alerts and alarms, um, but it's, it's priced very competitively for some of the smaller buildings that, uh, that don't need an enterprise level you know, 200 VAV control system. This is um, more typical of a smaller 
you know, 10 package unit AC um, building. Um, so that's kind of what you see here. You see a couple uh, graphs um, showing energy usage um, for lighting and mechanical systems here. Oh, e each one of those different colors is a different uh, energy using system? Correct. Or? Yeah, so the, the green one is a mechanical plant. Um, the red is, uh, is uh, lighting uh, for the office. And then um, the purple is the uh, office power. That's the plug loads and, mm -hmm. and other uh, electrical systems. And so the, um, for the system we just saw, um, like the IntelliHood, um, we can integrate uh, different types of control systems into one dashboard. And this is kind of what this, um, this graph is showing. So why are all these peaks and valleys here? Like in the middle, there's some very, very high usage. Yeah, so you, um, some of the, uh, the valleys you see are weekends, right? So you mm -hmm. see um, some of that power dropped during the weekends, which is what you would expect for office building. Um, and so through our controls, we can schedule things to make sure things turn off during the weekends. I've gone to a lot of buildings where it's a flat line, you know, Monday through mm -hmm. Sunday, mm -hmm. which is not good, meaning oh. air conditioning systems aren't turning off and they're not scheduled correctly. Um, so our, this system here uh, can do that. It can uh, change the schedule on weekends, make sure things turn off at night. And that's what there's some values you see. Some of the peaks you see um, are likely um, weather related, though that's the green uh, mechanical plant. Yeah, that's probably a humid day where it goes all the way up. Correct. H humid to plus uh, heat. Yeah. Right. Hmm. And so your estimated percentage savings is? Uh, through control, just through scheduling, um, mm -hmm. I've seen um, 20 to 30 percent energy savings, just making sure equipment is off. I've gone into buildings where they don't have control of their um, AC, AC units, and um, yeah, they run 24-7, run through the night, through the weekend, and just by scheduling them off, um, that's the most energy efficient piece mm -hmm. of equipment, mm -hmm. one that's mm -hmm. off. So um, it, typical uh, is 20, 30 percent savings on just doing 20, controls. 20, 30 percent savings. That's yeah. very, very remarkable. And I bet you have yet another trick up your sleeve here. Yeah. Something to do with refrigeration or? Yeah, so another application um, for especially the restaurant space that we we're talking about, um, how many uh, dinners we serve, you know, in, in the state. Um, refrigeration control is another demand control system. Um, with refrigeration, um, we have uh, air uh, compressors that, that cycle on and off through the day. Mm -hmm. And especially at night when doors are closed, the kitchen isn't active, um, the compressors are off, but yet these fans um, run 24-7. And so what you see there is a, what's called an EC motor. And the EC motor by itself saves about 40% energy over the standard um, uh, PSC motors or the shaded pool motors. Uh, but beyond that, we can control these, um, cycle them down to lower speed when the compressor is off. Um, and with the technology, we have this uh, cool troll uh, by NRM. It actually not only controls this fan and this motor, it controls the um, the uh, freezer cycle time, or the uh, defrost cycle time for the freezer, and also the uh, door defrost uh, cycle time for the freezer as well. So, so, so that you're defrosting at an optimum time, or it senses when defrosting is needed, or? Yeah, correct, so it's mm -hmm. demand controls again, right? So mm -hmm. rather than just doing it on a timer, which is what most applications are, it's mm -hmm. on a timer. What we do is we sense for when defrost is needed, and it, it cycles the, um, the defrost um, based on actual temperature sensors rather than uh, just on time, mm -hmm. which saves the same amount of energy. So again, it's two to three year payback for these type of projects. You, you keep saying that, <laughs> two to three year payback. Then. Yeah. Totally, so, totally remarkable. Yeah, so these are uh, three, um, three fans here, and those fans run year round uh, full speed. Now, now, is this a freezer we're looking at? This or? is a walk-in cooler. So this is a cooler. cooler. Okay. Um, yeah, so those fans run full speed all the time, and um, but that's the the compressor um, cycles on and off. When the when the freezer or the cooler is cool enough, the compressor shuts down, and then um, when cooling is needed, it's, it it turns back on. However, those three fans they run twenty four seven. So what this system does is it cycles those fans with the, with the compressor, um, and then along with that, there's there's some other things that we can do to save energy. Mm -hmm. Wow. And again, we don't 
see these things very often, but any restaurant is going to have these. Yeah, so you, they've got volume. Oh. Yeah, and every hotel you walk into is going to have a walk-in cooler. Every uh, fast food chain, mm -hmm. um, fast food restaurant has a walk-in cooler. Um, you'll see them uh, in 7-Elevens and um, in convenience store, other convenience stores. Uh, supermarkets have walk-in coolers, and so it's everywhere. Um, food processing um, areas. Yep. Um, again, we're talking about a um, couple hundred, a uh, couple thousand horsepower out there that we're, we can save some energy. Mm -hmm. Wow, very, very remarkable. Well, that uh, we've got a few minutes. Let's go back to this concept of efficiency as a really, really delicious way of achieving 100% clean energy by the year 2045. These units, <clears throat> you install them, I guess, very, very regularly. And each time you install a new unit, what you're doing is trading in a car that gets 20 miles per gallon for a car that gets 40 miles per gallon. Right. And you're doing this on a continuous basis. You don't have to do any EISs, environmental impact statements, and z you don't have to deal with zoning. Right. Yeah, it's just happening as as regular replacement. Right. Um, so, it, yeah, energy efficiency, um, I think, by far is a uh, very much better investment than uh, renewable. I mean, there's there's um, there's ways to that first graph you showed to um, we can take care of renewable energy, but the best way is for energy efficiency to trim mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that demand down. And um, and you know, just use an example. Um, if you know, if I had a hundred dollar a week Starbucks habit, um, mm -hmm. I mean, the idea is not to get another job so I can keep <laughs> up with my Starbucks habit. Is to kind of take care of my Starbucks Very habit, right? Analogy. So, yep. um, I guess that's that's one example <laughs> I kind of bring up sometimes. Um, but yeah, energy efficiency. Uh, I think the best way is to reduce your consumption, um, and then and then once you get to a point where you're um, efficient, um, and then you can think about renewable energy and. Mm -hmm. And then um, the state will be 100% sustainable by 2045. And we, oh, here's freezer solution. Oh, yeah, and so, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is more of the refrigeration. Um, uh -huh. Shows you another application. Um, to the left is uh, is uh, looks like a bakery where they have um, it's a food processing place, and you see there's hundreds and hundreds of these fans just like this out there, mm -hmm. um, and so energy savings is. Yep. is pretty easy to spread through through the state. And there is a website available. Yeah, right right it is, there there it is. Yeah, so that's yeah. um that's the NRM website, um one of our partners um mm -hmm. on this project. Yeah. Well, on that cheery note, we have to close Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. We new in Ener Hawaii Energy Systems. Thank you so much. Well, thank this you has very been much. An enlightened. Whoever thought there could be so much excitement in exhaust hoods. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Eric. Thanks for thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.